What does a disciple of Jesus Christ look like if you zoom in? They look like joy. My camera crew is not here today. They just got their power back either this morning or last night, so I'm going to keep them at home. So this video is going to be more low budget, but still, I will have joy because disciples of Jesus look like joy. Now, this one gets me excited, makes me joyful, because this is one of the ways I was saved, okay? My junior slash senior year in high school when I was wrestling or not to come to Christ or not, is, is Jesus worthy? Should I actually start worshiping Jesus? When I was wrestling with truth, I came across a guy at my school named Tyler Moffat. Tyler Moffat was a guy that was in my grade, and he went through the same Monday morning woes that we all did at Seven Lakes High School. He had the same afternoons with a bunch of homework that we did. He was in the same sports that we were in. He was in the same classes as us. The different thing about Tyler Moffat is that he was joyful. He was someone that was extremely, extremely joyful. And that's because of his relationship with Christ. And I saw that and I was attracted to just his joy. And I that was part of the, the, the process of me coming to know Jesus. So disciples of Jesus Christ look like joy. Now, without further ado, yes, the secret is out, okay? Yes, I am African. Leo is African. Leo's name is actually not Leo. Leo's name is Leandro Sergio, okay? I am African, but this right here is not my way of echoing the same message as the Lion King, okay? This talk about joy, this is not some Christianese way of preaching to you Hakuna Matata, okay? That problem-free philosophy is cute and it's catchy, but it's not Bible. Okay, there are problems in this world. This world is hard. There are confusion. There is a confusion and pain down here. Sin has unleashed chaos onto this planet. We felt it last year, and some of you are feeling that right now, how difficult this world is, how difficult this life can be. So listen, our call to joy is not God demanding us to always be in the mood to go to Schlitterbahn. That's not our call to joy. Our call to joy is not God demanding us to always pretend that we're happy and always be in a good mood. No, real men and women sit down to cry. Jesus did. But rather, our call to joy is a godly gladness. Biblical joy is a godly gladness that's anchored in the person and work of Jesus regardless of the circumstances. Being joyful in Christ, meaning regardless of the circumstances, you are you have this gladness about you. Godly gladness that is anchored in the person and work of Jesus, regardless of circumstances. Did you know, for example, that there is joy in heaven? Every time a sinner repents, the Bible says, Luke chapter 15 says, there is joy in heaven. God is rejoicing. Angels are rejoicing. There is joy in heaven. Furthermore, in the Bible, there's a man named Paul, and whenever Paul comes to Christ, his life becomes incredibly difficult. And even though he keeps getting arrested and beaten up and whipped and chained and spat on and cursed at and rumors spread about him and bitten by snakes and shipwrecked, even though his life is incredibly hard, he describes his life as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. He's sorrowful, meaning his heart aches, yet he's always rejoicing. And in that same way, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Disciples of Jesus Christ look like joy. Besides prayer, how do you cultivate joy? Well, here's two, two practical, way, practical ways. One, gratitude. If you're a disciple, you always have a reason for it. You, you always have something to be thankful for. Gratitude. Think of the big stuff you, have, you can be thankful for. Okay, who God is. Okay, God is love. If you take love and you multiply that sucker by infinity, that begins to explain God. And he's also immutable, meaning he's not going to change. He's not going to have an epiphany tomorrow and stop being loving. He doesn't go through mood swings. He doesn't go through off days. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't go through puberty. 
Rather, the Bible says in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23, that his mercy is new every single morning. You can always be thankful for who God is. And then also, you can be thankful for what he has done. I've said it here for five years straight with On Stop, and I, I plan to say it every, every sermon, every video, every small group, is the fact that Jesus on the cross took our punishment and by believing in him, we get the blessing that he deserves. On the cross, Jesus got what the world deserves. And by believing in him, we get what Jesus deserves. Proximity with God and being forever with him. We can always t thank God for who he is and what he's done. But also the little things. Okay, you can read. You have a house. You go to school. You have heat in your home. You have water. You have Wi-Fi. And I hope that living in Houston this past week has made you more thankful for these little things because you and I live in the top percentile of the world. Like we are living the best, most comfortable life that anybody in human history has ever lived. You always have a reason to be thankful. So I encourage you, one of the ways to cultivate joy is to spend the first eight minutes of your day just be thanking God for what you have and who he is. Spend the first eight minutes, your top eight minutes, just thanking God, just being thankful to God. That's one way. Hey, gratitude feeds joy, but also another way is anticipation. Anticipation. Okay, think about what God is going to do. God's love is healing the world and he's making all things new. And the crazy thing is, is he invites us into that. That's amazing. God is using me right now to, to, to mold you into being men and women of Christ. Like me, sinful Leo was turned around and now he's using me as a tool. That is something that I can be very, very thankful. So we can, anticipation can fuel our joy, especially whenever we realize the epic is coming. Okay, our story does not end with you and I being bored or confused or tired or in doubt. Our story ends with us seeing God face to face. We're going to see Jesus face to face and we're going to get to be with him and enjoy him forever. So gratitude and, and anticipation, those two things will fuel joy. But the best thing you can do is to pray the Holy Spirit gives you joy. Pray that the Holy Spirit opens up the eyes of your heart as to give you godly joy for him. Okay? And I pray that for you. Blessings.